Hello. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we export a variable rate application map. And we're going to learn how to change the legend to manage the resolution of the yield data in the first instance. Then we're going to look at how we create a variable rate application map using the grid template from the yield data that we have. And then finally, how to export the maps to an CNH ISO XML screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at our yield map that we have here and convert the seven legends that we have and we can see here down into a more manageable three. So the uh, the legend button here with the uh, the spanner on it, we all click that and then uh, ranges and move our number of divisions down to three and then click apply. We see that the uh, the software dynamically changes the the legend here on the right hand side. If you want to move that then you can do by just putting the um, numbers in yourself and then changing them to ones that you feel as though you want. So we've got seven and nine here. The thing I'm going to do next, if I'm happy with this uh, range, is create a template for it so we can be sure that when we want to um, use this uh, create variable rate application maps in the future for fields that have had wheat on it, we can use the same template to create our variable rate application map and that consistency is vitally important. So we highlight winter wheat, right mouse click and go add and here I'm going to click uh, dry yield and then put in three bands. I've renamed the uh, the previous one seven so I've already got that. I will click apply just to make sure that it, it is a applied to this uh, this right here. I will then click OK and we can now see that our legend has moved to three bands. In the uh, the dry yield category of our views, uh, and dry yield is what I'm going to use to create our, our variable rate application map, I'm going to click the cross and go add view and here I'm going to select grid. Now if we're exporting this variable rate application map out to uh, and, uh, a CNH ISO XML task controller then it's grid that we have to have. We can change the cell size from 10 meters up to uh, whatever size that, uh, that we want. We're going to have smoothing on 80% uh, as, the, as the default and then we're going to click OK and let the software create a gridded template for us. We do need to have boundaries around our fields uh, when we're doing this. So if you haven't got a boundary, then this won't work. So be sure to have a look at the boundary. And you can see the boundaries in the background here around the outside of the field. So make sure that you've got, uh, got those there. The important thing with uh, with creating this application map is understanding the agronomy behind what we're trying to do. So we'll look at yield offtake and then apply a nutrient to that uh, that area um, as as a replacement map. So here we've got our grid that has been created successfully, and if we're happy with that, what we're going to be doing is right mouse clicking on the grid and then clipping, clicking create simple application. Just before I do that what we need to make sure is that we've got some supplies of fertilizer in, uh, <coughs> in our working group area. I'm going to put some um, MOP on here and so I select MOP and go add. Um, uh, what I can also do is add my machines so I've got my um, my uh, my lime application, my fertilizer spreader. Um, I've got my um, and if I want to add tractors and and the like, then I can do. I can put my operator in there as well, and this helps all go to build up my record keeping. So I've got my working group. I'll go back to my views, right mouse click, create simple application, and so what it'll do now. And we can see that it's working is look, we've got our operator, we've got our um, applicator and we've got our MOP here. And the machine is a is a lime applicator, but we know it's the fertilizer spreader and it's got the tick under uh, under the variable rate application. So uh, further up, we've got our crop enterprise is 2014 wheat and it's an application job. So we keep all the defaults there because that's what we're happy with. I'll click OK. And now we see that the variable rate application map has uh, has been created. We've got all our grids here 
um, with our rate in them. Now this is where the agronomy needs to come in. We either put in the red areas we can put at the moment it's been seven kilograms per hectare of P has been put on it. We can change those rates to something uh, that that our agronomy uh, our agronomist is um, has has alluded to. So we put in the figures that uh, that we need to. Now for these two blocks here where we can see just two um, high high areas are we actually able to apply fertilizer to those two gridded areas depending on the width of our spreader we may not so what we're going to do is change them back so they'll actually be the same as the uh, the areas around them so if we highlight the blue area and then move across to the summary and the apply rate We'll click the, uh, the the yellow area, the yellow legend, and it will change it. So that now becomes 50 kilograms per hectare rather than 75. So if we can uh, we can change any of these rates, it's not a problem. We'll change that red one as well, uh, where it's a a low yield. And uh, so once we've changed them, let's just do one more. So we'll click on the grid that we want to change, select the uh, the rate, and then select our point our mouse off it so we can change the uh, the map to whatever we want it to be and then we click save and close once we're happy with the rate and that is now how we're how we've created our variable rate application map the next job is to export it out to the the monitor our field is now ready to export. The first job that we have to do uh, though is to go into our job tab and here we can see corner application and this is the one that we want to export. We'll right mouse click, go on to work order and we have to check to make sure that console is selected. Now if I just scroll the bar along here we can see that it comes up with a another little icon. Now if I right mouse click it work order and unclick console you can see that the icon disappears. So uh, to our export it as the ISO XML file we have to make sure that console is checked in our in our list. So we'll now go up to the right job data, we'll select New Holland, the ISO XML, we'll go into resource list check that we've got the right field selected or the number of fields that we've got selected to uh, export out to the stick. We'll go options and these are the defaults if we've got uh, guidance lines and obstacles and boundaries that need to go to the uh, the monitor then these can come out as well. We only need to uh, we have to make sure that we've got prescriptions under the ISO XML box so we have to make sure it's clicked on the left hand side but not on the right. So we're happy with that, we'll click OK. We have our USB stick uh, selected, it's got nothing on it, it has been formatted. So we know that that's ready to go, we'll click OK. And so now that application map has been sent out to the, uh, to the monitor. We click OK again and it'll export the second part of the job out here because a CN1 folder is created and also an ISO XML file. So that's the reason that we have two data files. Sometimes you may see not responding here, that is just down to the speed of computer. Um, you can see that I'm getting it on mine, so you may get it on yours as, uh, as well. So uh, if that happens, all it require, is required is just a, a little bit of patience to make sure that um, the job can be, can be completed. But uh, when we're exporting this, uh, this job, we have to make sure that we have that console ticked in the application um, job that we saw right at the beginning of, uh, of this export routine. It's important that we do that, otherwise the job won't, uh, won't be exported. If we're exporting it directly onto a USB stick, it will take longer. If this was onto your desktop and then copied across, it would be quicker. Uh, depending on how many jobs you've got, you may want to consider that as an, as an option as well. So we click OK, the, uh, the, the export dialog window disappears and we're just now back to our uh, variable rate application.